uh, ever rising demand of glaucoma management results in a constant search of an avenue to improve upon existing uh, treatment management and innovative newer options. So today I am going to talk on what are the newer horizons that we have uh, seen during this uh, time. The sustained release implants in the retinal diseases have been causing ripples since its inception and will such uh, modality bring shift paradigm in the glaucoma management that we are going to talk on this to share this what is brewing in the glaucoma management in this regard. After 20 <coughs> years, uh, we are now going to have two new class of drugs which are approved by US FDA this year. The Netasudil 0.02% and Latanaprost Budon 0.024% have a novel approach in the IOP reduction. <coughs> the Netasudil is a ROC inhibitor have shown to reduce cellular stiffness. It is also norepinephrine transport inhibitor. It facilitates the trabecular and uveoscleral outflow. The dose once a day, uh, day is an effective as effective as the timolol BID dose and has no contraindication like B timolol. The latanoprostone budon enhances the uveoscleral outflow and it is a nitric oxide which dilates the blood vessels and that improves the microcirculation. Now these both molecule has an additional distinctive feature. It can give a neuroprotective action. So maybe it has a significant role when we are considering the normal tension glaucoma patients. So whatever said and done, the need for the prolonged uh, uh, treatment or chronicity of this disease burden with its cost entails us to search for the alternative uh, modality of the treatment and we have to breathe the grip between the drug non-compliance and invasive surgery. So sustained release uh, implants in retina as I've shared have already been causing ripples since its inception. So so many roots are shown in this figure. So are we able to uh, find out a route for our glaucoma medication deposition? So new delivery systems are <coughs> in the form of punctal plug, rings to be inserted around the globe that are also available. The Timolol sustained release, a topical ophthalmic drug delivery system toad is placed under the upper lid, which works for three months. And latanopro soaked contact lenses is another way to deliver the drug for a longer period. Now the latanopros in a large unilamellar vesicle is derived from the liposomes and it is given as a subconjunctival injection which uh, the effect lasts for 50 days and this provides us a very good external platforms. The another is duracet latanopros injections and that also works over a longer period of time. Now what about the internal platform? The myometopros sustained release implants uh, uh, people are working on and I think the phase 3 trial has been completed to be uh, implanted into the anterior chamber and it reduces the intraocular pressure by 6 to 8 millimeter of mercury at, and works for the 6 months. Similarly, Travaprost is also to be implanted as an extended release biodegradable polymer which reduces 30 percent reduction of intraocular pressure over an 8 months period. So it's a uh, drug which is, these are the drugs which are going to work for a longer period so that we can avoid the compliance issue. The ophthalmic micro pumps are implanted over the sclera. They are wireless and uh, they are programmable and we can also use it again. It's a refillable. So dis it dispenses the nanoliter size doses and this implant effectivity lasts up to 12 months. Now the decade have been elapsed since the pilocarpine sustained release approval. <coughs> Yet journey has not been uh, uh, completed. Uh, we are still in a very, very slow pace on the completion of this because of the challenges like backpacking of the drug, drug solubility and the time release versus therapeutic effect. So the looking at the alternative strategy to combat the aforementioned issues. Now uh, we are uh, knowing that in India now we have a cyclo G6 is also available and it uses 810 nanometer continuous wave diode laser. Micropulse P3 probe and G probe are uh, uh, available for refractive glaucoma. P3 probe is to be used for primary opening of glaucoma patients. 200 milliwatt of diode laser energy is delivered over 100 seconds within 0 0.5 milliseconds on and 1.5 milliseconds off and it delivers 30 per 1.1% duty cycle. 
basically it is a continuous wave chopped into a short pulse duration which is less than thermal relaxation time so there is no tissue damage it is spared and can be done repeatedly and induces beneficial biological factors it is a non incisional procedure induces minimal inflammation with excellent safety profile and can be used in opd procedure and it may uh, it gives us predictable results over a long term period this is how it is been done the uh, clockwise and anti clockwise cycle is been done and what it does it works by widening the extracellular space same as pg analog and the probe is placed on the pars plana region 1 mm away from the limbus and moved fast first in clockwise manner and then backwards in 180 degree and avoid the 9 o'clock and uh, 3 o'clock position so now it is time for a minimal invasion everyone is talking bad about the trabeculectomy or a filtering surgery so i will be talking little bit on mig yes i will not go into the detail as there is some uh, another speaker who is going to cover on migs it's a minimally invasive glaucoma surgery and brings revolutionary approach to the target patients of mild to moderate glaucoma and it has a very high safety profile and it can be done ab interno or uh, it can be done ab externo and it preserves the important eye tissue for the future treatment option if this fails and there are two options external filtration or internal filtration i will not go into the detail of this to save the time and these are the options available and the migs uh, trabectom is now available in india is uh, fda approved indian government also and i stent uh, or uh, is also available in uh, western world and now zen implant is going to come and cypass micro stent is not been used uh, i will not go into the detail if she is going to cover on the trabectom which ablates and removes the trabecular meshwork and unroofing of the sams canal and it has a tip uh, bend 90 degree to create the triangular protective foot plate which acts as a guide as well as it guides into the slams canal i stent is the smallest implant known to the body and it has a three ridges which fix it into the uh, slams canal it is heparin coated to promote the self priming and it should be used as a combined surgery with the faco uh, surgery and it gives uh, see the what is the problem in the open angle glaucoma even the juxta canalicular tissue is affected so just by putting something there will not work while this i stent will bypass this and gives us outflow facility and the results are shown in this slide and then stent is a flexible tube and should be implanted subcongenitally uh, to avoid the okay only last two slides can i continue Stop. the cypass is uh, a supra ciliary tube designed to create a control outflow facility and the hydrus is a long tube and it's uh, supposed to give a better results so what are the experimental uh, options that we have these days as i said various implants to be put in the supra ciliary region or the nanoparticle or a different delivery systems and injections and the biodegradable implant to be implanted subconjunctively but no, i, I should not forget about the artificial ig which is very very important in di